Thank you very much. Well, first of all, thank you to Lewis. Um, um, I'm Scott Williams. I'm here in, in Shanghai. I'm so honored uh, to be invited to this forum. And thank you so much for your courage and inspiration. And I mean that for all of us. Um, I just want to mention a few things, then I have a question at the end. Uh, I was fortunate enough to work with Al Gore a little bit in 2015 on the Climate Change Project and when he was in, in China and touring around, and he talked about the Paris Accord, COP21. And he was asked a question, I remember at that time, from the audience, and they said, is there any reason that the U.S. administration would not ratify, you know, not ratify the agreement? And he said, oh, it's impossible, um, unless uh, there's a completely new administration. So we know what happened. Um, and I just want to you know, mention just an experience myself as well. When you talk about the beauty of the ocean, and the Nemo type environment of the water. I, I've experienced that myself diving off the coast of Okinawa in Japan. And um, then, you, then you see the power of the ocean, the beauty and the power. And I experienced the tsunami myself. I was in Phuket in Thailand uh, during that event. I just wanna ask a question. When you dove into that tunnel and you're swimming for 10 minutes in such cold water, I just can't imagine how you achieve that not just courage, but just the stamina and uh, the unique you know, strength of your body and your vitality. I just want to hear more about that. And then finally, um, and knowing a little bit about COP21 is if we don't take action, what happens over the next 24 to 36 months? What happens over the next five years if we do not take action? Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Your, your first question was about my body going into that tunnel. Let me take you back a, a, a few days and a few nights. So the Inuit people, so the people, the indigenous communities that live in the uh, Canadian Arctic, uh, high up in the Canadian Arctic, they say that in every single person, in every single person, there's an enormous battle taking place, a battle in the head. And it's a battle between two wolves, a good wolf and a bad wolf. And which wolf is going to win? It's the wolf which you feed. And for the three days before this swim, all I could think about was everything which would go wrong. I was thinking about how cold the water was. It was so incredibly cold. I'd swum in colder water. In the Ross Sea, it was colder. But there's something about cold water when you get older. You, you know, your body's not so good at handling those extreme temperatures. I was doubting whether I could actually do it. I was thinking about the ice and myself and I took Jose Maria Figueres early one afternoon down this tunnel. So we wore special clothes and we went down this tunnel and we could see the water beginning to fill up in this tunnel. You know, and so as the area got, got towards the afternoon when it got a bit warmer, suddenly the water's coming off the ice sheet and is now going down this tunnel really, really quickly. The water is rising. You know, what's the possibility of drowning? And then the third worry I was always worried about was one of these moulons appearing and you can go straight down to the bottom. And so for three days, three nights, and the nights are very long, all I was doing was feeding this bad wolf. Was just feeding this bad wolf. And when Jose arrived, it's amazing how you have a choice about what to focus on. And it's not easy because you'll never ever be able to get rid of the bad wolf. The bad wolf will always be there, but you've got to really focus on that good wolf. And I remember standing at the beginning of that tunnel about to go in, I played a little bit of music. And then I said to myself, I said, Lewis, if you don't dive in here now, who is going to protect this place? Because it's so far away from anywhere. How are you going to be able to get this into be world headlines? How are you going to get this into Russia? How are you going to get this into China? Now, the wonderful thing about both Russia and China is that, uh, especially Russia, Russians love cold water swimming. You know, Russians are a little bit, I say this with love because I, I've got lots of Russian friends, they're a little bit crazy. Every winter, they go down to a river, they go to a lake, they jump in the cold water. Every Russian has done it. And, and, and so... There's something about swimming in cold water. It's a language which people understand. There's beauty in struggle. Everybody could understand what I had been through. 
but it was just getting that mind right at the final moment. And I just said, if you don't dive in here now and swim, who is going to do it? So to get the mind right, one has to ask that right question. Physically, I'd spent six months training in water, which got colder and colder and colder and colder because your body needs to be robust. But the most important thing, yep, I can get my, my mind right, I can get my body right, but ultimately you've got to get your heart right. I'm not talking about that pumping heart, but I'm talking about connecting with that deep inner purpose, what you're doing. And when you get all three of those together, it's amazing what, what the physical body can do, you know? Uh, your second question is, what happens if we take no action now and we're not able to get on that road to Paris? The consequences are extremely serious. Be under no illusions that what we are now facing is an existential threat to life on Earth. Of that, I have no doubt. I've spent now 33 years in all the different oceans. I've seen them change. I've seen the, the speed of change. I have no doubt that we are facing an existential threat to life on Earth. I think the biggest threat which we face, though, is not climate change. I think the biggest threat which we face is the belief that somebody else is going to solve the problem. That somebody else is going to solve the problem. I get asked so many times by journalists, do you have hope? Hope is a, you've got to earn hope. Hope is a really dangerous thing because hope, it, hope can lead you down a road where you say, well, hope is like abdicating responsibility that you hope that somebody else is going to solve the problem. Okay. You've got to earn hope. And I have hope that we take action and we take action every single day. And taking action means you get out of bed every single morning and you're moving down a road towards Paris. Action means every single one of us personally, every single company, every single country is saying, this is a serious issue it's gonna face all of us. And I have hope if we can all get on that road to Paris. But it's gonna involve this groundswell of movement this is what's so exciting about somebody like Greta Thunberg is because she speaks very straight to world leaders. And perhaps we need a little bit more of that. Thank you, Lewis. That was, thank you very much. I really appreciate your answer.